Hello guys, this is the Epiphany. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to predict the element of certain enemies by looking at their characteristics. Uh, by that, I mean their resistances and lock, AP parry, MP parry. Uh, I'm also going to be showing you some examples from screenshots that I've taken, and I'm going to be spectating random Colosseum fights towards the end of the video and predicting what elements those people are. Before I do that, I want to announce that I'm selling a couple of Exo Mages. 1 MP Triton Ring, 1 MP Ring Goose, 1 MP Corruption Ring, 1 MP Barbaric Band, and 1 MP Horrifying. All the stats are pretty decent, maybe except for the Barbaric Band, uh, it could be a little better, but the others, pretty decent. If you have any interest, let me know and we can negotiate. I've had a lot of requests to make this video because people who watch my Colosseum fights Basically, they can see that as soon as I enter the fight, I can predict whatever element the enemy team is. And it's a pretty important skill, especially in PvP, so that you can counteract the enemy's moves. If you know what element the enemy is, you can predict what spells they can possibly use. You might think that that's not important, but a very, very simple uh, thing that you need to keep in mind is maybe the fact that you have high resistance of one particular element and low resistance of another element and let's say you had 40% resist of fire and you know that the anaripsa on the enemy team is intelligence then you can feel free to run in and not be worried that the enemy uh, anaripsa can you know do a lot of damage to you since you have high resistance whereas if you had low resistance and you know that the enemy is that element then you can you know you you know that it's not a good idea to just charge in and that's basically it okay so as you know i'm in the vital guild and in the vital discord a few days ago i uploaded this little summary that i made up it took me around uh, 20 minutes to type up um it's all from my opinion and experience and it's valid as of today which is the first of february 2020 the reason i'm saying that is because maybe in six months from now there will be new sets that come out and different you know characteristics for those sets okay so let's start with the agility element okay so agility is the easiest because you know agility gives lock and you can see how much lock a certain person has it's very easy to tell because they have very high lock 110 plus you know, some tank agility characters maybe have only around 900 agility or 1,000 agility, but that's very rare. Usually people have more than 110 lock uh, indicates their agility. They usually have high MP parry as well from Jamie Jack set, uh, which gives MP parry. Usually has moderate pushback resistance around 50 to 100 uh, because from the Jamie Jack set once again. And other items that give pushback res, such as maybe a Dark Court Shovel or a Door Abyss. And we have 14% neutral resistance, which is the standard for an agility set, unless they're wearing a Dragon Helmet, which has 27%. And maybe they have minus 21 crit resistance from using a Door Abyss. Okay, next we have Chance. Chance is the most difficult element because personally, in my opinion, uh, Chance sets are hard to make. It's difficult to tell if someone is chance, uh, but usually in the sets, they have higher percent neutral and earth resistance than the other elements because chance gear tends to give a lot of neutral and earth resistance. They have 20 fixed neutral res, which indicates Gilbert G Rapier Sword, or if they have 15 earth, 15 air res, and that's from a slash and axe. It's quite difficult uh, because, you know, these are pretty much the only two uh, identifying factors of two common uh, chance weapons that I can come up with. And also the lock is moderate because chance gear gives a moderate lock. Okay, next we have strength. Strength is uh, probably the most common element in Colosseum and there's many ways you can identify a chance set. An additional 10 earth and 10 water resistance indicates a tash ring. It's the most common hint. 12 earth represents shabby boots or shabby shoes. Usually the set will have low percent neutral and percent earth resistance than other elements. Percent fire resistance should be high. 
They have low AP and MP parry because strength sets do not give much AP and MP parry. So people usually have, have around 30. Has low lock due to items such as cat's eye bow, raping lock. And most of the common strength items do not boost lock. Unless you're using sets such as a crustic ring or dark court set. But that's not a very good item to use unless you're a strength fecker or something who actually needs lock. And that's pretty rare. Uh, usually the crit resist is quite moderate or high, uh, 40 plus, because items such as Kutlu Mask, Cloak of Thousand Excuses gives crit resistance, and maybe even a Stalag Shield. Additional 25 Fixed Earth represents a Honeycomb Shield. It's a common shield used on melee characters such as Iops, Masks, and Sacrius. Additional 25 Fixed Water indicates Water Dial. 25 Pushback Resistance is from a hammercher but usually it's a little less than 25 because people you know don't mage the pushback resistance to 25 usually it's around 20 21 22 so that's how you know intelligence is quite moderate um you know it's not too hard to identify usually has zero or negative crit resistance due to a double ring goose you know some ring goose is minus 30 so wearing two of those is minus 60. People usually use a Stalag Shield and a Corrupted Bow to make up for this fact uh, because Stalag Shield is 35 crit res and Corrupted Bow is 25, so it gets rid of the minus 60. But usually, you know, poorly maged gear would not make up completely 60. So, for example, a uh, Stalag Shield gives 33 out of 35 crit resistance and a bow that gives 24 out of 25 crit resistance, they will still have minus 3 crit resistance in their set. You know, obviously, someone such as myself, when I'm maging items for myself, I ensure that crit resistance is maximum, because if crit resistance is missing, it just looks ugly, and the item is just, you know... Every time you look in your inventory, and you see missing crit resist, it just pisses you off. Some people who use a Fallen to Shield instead of a Stalag Shield will still have minus 35 crit resistance, since only 25 is made up from the bow. Usually has high AP parry due to double ring goose, so 50 or 60 plus. Even if the person is using one ring goose, they will still have, you know, roughly 50 or more AP parry. The resist resistance is similar to 24, 31, 31, 31, but some sets will have something like this as well or similar. You know, it's just like a general range that uh, intelligence sets have. Sometimes they can have 17 neutral resistance if uh, Pathogastrix is used instead of Unnameable Boots because Unnameable Boots gives 7% neutral. Usually the percent water and the percent air resistance is higher than percent earth and percent fire because percent earth and percent fire are the two elements, uh, two resistances that are low in intelligence sets. Uh, also a rare one, uh, 10 air resistance indicates archetypal bow. I also have some extra points here but I'm not going to go through those because it's not really applicable in this situation. Okay, so now that you've you know heard that summary, I'm going to provide a few examples here. All right, once again, if you look at the top left here, you can see, you know, what element it is because I just named the photos to make it easier for myself. But if we look at this particular player here, it's clearly an agility player. Um, 101 lock, you know, it's high, has high MP parry, high pushback res, minus 23 crit res, probably from a poorly mage door abyss. Uh, however, we have an additional 24 air resistance, which is probably from an air dial. It's the only thing I can think of. So this person is probably a ranged air player, uh, Harper Mage or Kra or something using an air dial. All right, next, this particular set here is also definitely agility, 159 lock, 14% neutral resistance, as I mentioned before, and 13% air resistance. Air resistance is low because it's an agility set. Uh, as you know, um, agility sets lack air resistance. So this is obviously agility. Next, we have a similar story as the first one. Minus 21 crit resistance uh, indicates Door Abyss. High pushback res from uh, Jamie Jack and Door Abyss, maybe Dark Court as well. High MP parry. 114 lock uh, characteristics that show an agility set. Next, we have one uh, that is 27% neutral and has high lock, so it's definitely agility. 
It's using a dragon helmet. It's blatantly obvious because you cannot get this much resistance in an, in an agility set unless you have a dragon helmet. 65 pushback res is quite high. Probably indicates a, um, you know, Jammy Jack or Door Abyss, a Dark Horse Shovel. Who knows? All right, next. Um, we're going on to Chance now. This particular player is Chance. We know this because um, the neutral res is very high and the earth res is quite high as well uh, compared to these elements anyway. Usually chance sets lack water res and air res. So this is why this is a chance set. The next set we have here, we have um, some additional uh, neutral, additional earth and water res. Um, but the key factor here is the 40% neutral. It indicates that it is a chance set. There's not much to say about it because personally I'm not confident with chance. All right, next. This set, um, we have the neutral and the water res, which is raised by 15. So let's check back here. Oh, okay. Slash and axe is actually 15 earth and 15 air. So whatever this thing is, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's chance. Um, I don't really know how to describe it in any other way, but uh, I wouldn't say that it's intelligence uh, because AP parry is low. I wouldn't say that it's strength because the lock is quite high and you have very high earth res and it's definitely not agility. So by process of elimination, it's chance. All right, next we have, this is um, quite... Uh, not easy to tell, but basically if you look at the crit res, it's a bit low, uh, below zero. Indicates double ring goose and a poorly matched corrupted bonus stalag shield. High AP parry, 14% uh, neutral, I don't know where he got that from. Low fire res uh, from, you know, characteristics of an inset. And 34 pushback res is probably from a Scapu helmet. Alright, in this particular set here, I actually included the person and the and um, the class because uh, if you look at the earth res here you have extra 25 and as I said before 25 could come from a honeycomb shield uh, you know for a strength character however the thing is um, an anaripsa would not be using a honeycomb shield it's actually an earth dial and an earth dial gives AP reduction uh, which is a good you know, good for an Enderipsa. That's why sometimes if you know what class the person is as well, it'll help you. Uh, for example, in 3v3 Colosseum, you would not find, a, um, you won't find a chance Iope, for example, because it's just, no one plays chance. You won't find a chance Ram either, because no one plays chance Ram in Colosseum. Okay, this particular character here is blatantly intelligence, minus 60 crit res. Doesn't have a stalag shield, doesn't have a corrupted bow, and you can see that the AP parry is high, 59. And the uh, fire resistance is extremely low, so it's definitely an intelligence player. Alright, this particular person here, we have 24% neutral res. Um, 40 pushback res from a Scapu helmet. Uh, low fire res, uh, high AP parry. Minus one crit res, so dub, double ring goose, quite likely there. This one we have minus 28 crit res, which is probably double ring goose as well, and has a poorly mage um, stalag shield. He's not using a corrupted bow, he's using something else, but I cannot be sure just from looking at this. Pushback res is from uh, Scapu Helmet, high AP parry, double ring goose. Alright, next we have, uh, we're moving on to strength now. Okay, so low ap and mp parry but this guy is using uh i'm pretty sure fallen's the shield because his mp parry is lower than ap also explains how he has the lock 40 crit res is from cloak of thousand excuses and uh Kutulu mask we have an additional 22 earth res here which is 10 of it is from tash ring as well as the 10 water and 12 of it is from a shabby shoes this particular person very obvious, 10 earth, 10 water, tash ring, nothing more to be said. This person here, zero lock, high crit res. So I'm assuming Kutulu mask, cloak of thousand excuses and a stalag shield. 
Um, yeah, that's that, that. That's all I can pretty much say about this one. Uh, this person here, you probably seen from one of my previous videos. I said that it was a shitly mage tash ring, and yes, I stand by that statement because six earth, six water. This particular person here is difficult. It's not easy to tell what they are because the set does not really follow any rule that I've explained. But I would have to guess that it is strength because 24 pushback res is probably from a amateur. And we have a 92 AP parry, 0 MP parry. So he probably is using the 32 AP parry uh, trophy but in minus is 32 MP parry. He could be using a fall into the shield as well which in, uh, explains the high lock and or maybe the fallen star explains the 24 pushback res as well the crit resistance i cannot really explain apart from maybe he's using uh queen of thieves or or the G gal you know gal ring and gal gal boots whatever that is all right this set here 39 uh res uh probably 24 from a kutlu mask 15 from a Cloak of Thousand Excuses and 20 pushback res from a Hamacher. Uh This this one is quite difficult to tell because he has actually decent lock. But judging from the low percent earth resistance, I would have to assume that this is a strength character. And, you know, given the fact that fire res is high as well. Alright, next. Zero neutral, zero earth. Okay, it's definitely strength. No, Nothing more to be said. All right, this this person here is hard. Um, I've labeled it um, hard, and the reason for that is because the resistances are weird. You know, like you have high neutral, you can assume that it's uh, chance as well, but then the guy has zero lock, so it can't be chance, and low AP parry, so we don't know exactly what it is. Uh, seven additional earth res as well, so it's hard. But I'm gonna have to go with strength because zero lock is. Um, you know, a strength characteristic. Uh, this 31 crit res is probably from a Stalag shield. And the high fire res is key uh, to know for a strength set. So I'm going to assume that this guy is strength. Well, okay, well, he is strength because I'm the one that took the screenshot, so I know. But yeah. Okay, so you've basically seen the, uh, you know, the key characteristics, um, you know, intelligence being low crit resistance however if you make a bullshit set such as myself you can actually have an intelligence set that matches the characteristics 24 percent neutral and then the rest is averaging 31 percent but mine has a hundred crit resistance so anyone want to try and guess what set i'm using okay that's for you to guess Okay, the next part of the video is the final part. I'm just going to spectate random Colosseum fights and try and guess the elements of the people. Um, let's pick a fight that hasn't started too long ago. Um, okay, let's do this one. Come on, loading. Oh, they're not even in yet. Yeah, but, uh, okay, they're in. That's good. Start of the fight. Okay, let's start on the right hand side here. Okay, Masquerader. We have an additional 25 water resistance. So that's a um, a water dial. And if you notice, the uh, negative crit res probably is from tread far set. So I'm going to assume this guy is critical damage. Yep, critical damage. Uh, I didn't talk about critical damage set, but that's what he is. Alright, this Algonac. Alright, 10 neut. Oh, no, no. 10 earth and 10 water resistance therefore tash ring so is strength and a ripsa 39 pushback res probably from a scapu helmet high ap parry double ring goose minus one crit res double ring goose corrupted bow stalag shield intelligence all right this osa here is using an intelligence mount so i'm going to assume his intelligence but if you look at his his stats minus 28 uh minus 28 crit res from double ring goose and a stalag shield this iop here is oh, definitely agility 157 lock very high pushback res this sacria here is chance because of the 20 additional neutral 
resistance. So yeah, his chance. Okay, so that fight was quite easy. Let's move on to another fight. Come on, the lag. All right, let's uh, scroll to the bottom uh, where we were before. Um, all right, let's try this one. Oh, this is a pre-made one. Uh, both Barkers have the same. Okay, let's start on the right-hand side again. All right, let's wait for them to stop moving. All right, this Hopper Mage is pushback. Okay, well, he goes last in the team, has high crit res, but yeah. All right. This Zelo is strength, 10, uh, 10 earth, 10 water res from Tash Ring. This Forgonaut is intelligence, double ring goose, uh, blatantly obvious double ring goose, minus 60 crit res. This Eliotrope, I'm going to assume is strength, low lock, 37 crit res. Probably from a Kutulu mask and a cloak of thousand excuses. Alright, this Echo Flip here is Agility, 121 lock. I also noticed that he went in and used uh, Man Tax before, so yeah, he's Agility. Alright, this Oza here is using an Intelligence Mount, so I can tell, but if, if he wasn't using an Intelligence Mount, you can tell from the minus 37 crit res that uh, the minus 37 crit res basically indicates double ring goose, and he's probably using a Corrupted Bow. All right, so that fight wasn't too hard either. Let's go into a third and final fight. Um, 3v3, you see this one? Okay, sure, I crown this side, crown that side. Usually crowns are strength, but let's see anyway. All right, let's start on the, uh, let's start at the bottom this time. All right, the Foganaut is crit damage. Uh, once again, I didn't talk about crit damage, but crit damage uh, minus crit res from uh, tread fast set. Masquerader, ooh, that's that's tough. Hmm, I'm actually not sure what this masquerader is. Um, the fact that he has changed into the coward state suggests that he's probably a ranged uh, necrotic bow uh, mask, such as the previous Colosseum fight. Uh, that I uploaded, the one where the guy survived from Sparkling Silver. Probably range damage with Necrotic Bow. But yeah, I can't really tell by looking at that. Alright, this Krah here is probably Strength. Uh, strength cause um, low lock, uh, 43 crit res. Uh, you know, normally Strength sets have decent crit res. Okay, the Krah on the enemy team here. Hmm... Well, the guy did use punitive arrows so his strength, but I can't really figure out how he got 80 lock. And I can't figure out how he got 15 earth, 15 water res. It's because it's not a tash ring, a tash ring is 10. Yeah, but hmm, that's a tough one. Alright, Eneripsa is intelligence, zero crit res, probably double ring goose, and a properly maged stalac bow. Uh, no, stalac shield and corrupted bow. A uh, high AP parry from double ring goose. Eliotrope here, I'm going to assume is strength because zero lock. And he has zero crit res, so he's probably using a um, a four leaf. Yeah, yeah, he's strength, he's using persiflage. Okay, next, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, so, I hope you guys learned a bit about predicting the elements of uh, particular enemies by looking at their characteristics. If you have any questions about this video, let me know. Uh, it's a pretty difficult, you know, it, it's an important skill, but it's not easy being able to predict someone's element. As you saw me in that third fight, you know, I couldn't predict what three of them were. But yeah, if you have any questions, let me know below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next video.